which happened to be at a wedding. Now, this isn't a wedding, but it's a celebration of one that's lasted a long time. Did I say that? I shouldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> really long time. I'm not far behind. So. Uh, and this tells us a lot about what God is like. So I wanted to read this. The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we got Walmart over here. We got Walmart. Okay. Not going to happen here. We're sure to that. And this is like a mother. So Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. Dear mother, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. But my time is not yet come. And what he's saying, he's not ready to start doing the miracles that he knew he would be doing. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. That's a lot of wine. <laughs> this might be more than Walmart. <laughs> 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first. And then goes to Walmart, I guess. Yeah. Uh, a host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miracle that came in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed who he was. And I'm just going to make two very brief comments. One is uh, Jesus shows us what God is like. And what he shows us is God loves a party. And I know in saying that, some of you are feeling sort of, that just doesn't sound right. That's not God, is it? But here is God showing up at a, at a wedding celebration. These Jewish celebrations were real events. Dancing and singing and a lot of joy. The second thing that, that's pretty obvious is that uh, when God gives gifts, he's extravagant. It was 20 to 30 gallons of water that were turned to wine. Um, that, that would probably take care of this event tonight and several more events. Um, Jesus didn't just give them um, a couple of bottles. He was extravagant, extravagant in the gift that he, he gave to this, this wedding couple and this family. And as, as Andy, Andy and Ann and I were talking about this the other day, uh, one of the comments that they made was how it's been the grace of God that's gotten them their 50 years together. And um, I can say for my wife and I, we, we'd say the same thing. Uh, and, and you know, in the same way that God was here celebrating in the midst of this party, uh, he's been in the middle of Ann and Eddie's relationship, and he, he's given to you extravagantly, and you've loved other people well as a response to that. Um, and so, tonight is a night to celebrate, knowing God's grace in Eddie and Ann's individual lives, but in their life together, and in their 50 years of marriage. Uh, his grace and goodness to them that's been extravagant. Um, it, it does remind me of a quote that uh, I heard some years ago uh, from a British author by the name of G.K. Chesterton. And he said one time uh, about Christianity, he said, you know, I think what it does is provides the boundaries for good things to run wild. And, and certainly that's been true in you all's lives. That good things are good things are
Because I would like to pray a blessing uh, over your lives and your continued life together. And so if you would bow your heads. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of, of a man and a woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Eddie and Anne. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where you, your saints, feast forever in your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank all of you for coming. Uh, I talked John into coming to this thing because I knew once we got here we were going to have what you might say a mixing of the spirits. <laughs> <laughs> but he's been a great friend for a great number of years. And I want to thank you all so much for helping Ann and I celebrate this event in our lives. Um, at my age, the first thing I always wanted to do when I went somewhere was find out where the bathrooms were. <laughs> if y'all look to the rear, they're back there. And, uh, and, and Milton, we don't have any adult diapers here either. <laughs> but uh, we want y'all to have a great time. Paul has been kind enough to put together a great bunch of musicians for us. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to let, let Ann talk a little bit. We'll have some fun. Okay. I get the mic and you don't have to listen. <laughs> this is my party. And we did not have a wedding 50 years ago. We won't. So I'm going to read this passage that was written for most and read at most weddings. Because I've done all this perfectly. And everybody out there knows me well. And so I know you're going to know that I've done this perfectly. <laughs> if I speak in the tongue of men and angels and have not love, I am a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And ask for king, do not say a word. <laughs> love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud or rude or self-seeking or easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, it does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Well, 50 years ago. This is agape love, by the way. This is the way God loves. Perfect. And it's not the way I have loved. And so I have to say that Eddie has heard a lot of resounding gongs and clanging cymbals. <laughs> <laughs> he has also heard me not being extremely patient or kind. Now we had this family discussion with some cousins not too long ago about the choices we were making 50 years ago. And so, Eddie and I chose to get married. And what is amazing about that is Eddie's choices. He chose to love me. And he chose to be there for me all these years. And more than that, he loved my family. And he has been patient and kind, and most of you would agree that Eddie is a lot more patient than I am. <laughs> and, got a lot of witnesses here. <laughs> what anybody else has, and we've been blessed with all of that. I never heard him boast, really. And though I have been called how maintenance and proud, and he is not. And he has been rude occasionally. <laughs> but no record of wrongs. Eddie Harris loves the truth, and he has always said there's two things he cannot deal with. One is somebody who tells lies, and somebody who speaks. And so he always rejoices when the truth wins out. So, after 50 years, the three things remain. 
faith, hope, and love. That's the greatest of faith, and love. And thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some years ago, Ann was involved in a, I guess, a Bible study. And, uh, just, just one? I had, I had a friend of ours, uh, Leslie Hughes, called me, and she said, uh, you need to write something about Ann. And I wrote this 16 years ago. Hang on, though. Can everybody hear at the back? Can y'all hear? Yes. Okay, good. Go ahead. This is to my wife, Miss Ann, as she is affectionately known to all of our friends and children. Leslie asked that I write a small piece on what you meant to me. Actually, with some embarrassment, I have been remiss in doing this for you for a long time. So being the candid fix-it man, a marriage may be made in heaven, but the maintenance must be done on earth. <laughs> and being somewhat akin to a biblical scholar would say, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she references her husband. With this in mind, Anne is a wonderful creature of many talents, which include psychology. She can take any mood I conjure up and deal with it in a manner to make the worst of me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Finance. She is a family banker and has an exceptional ability to use our resources with prudence and good judgment, turning the basket of little fishes into one that pays large multitude of obligations, so to speak. <laughs> Motherhood. She has always provided good advice based on her religious and moral principles regarding our grown children and their friends. I am constantly amazed at the relationships which have been developed over the years and individuals who seek her advice. I once heard her say that your decisions can take you out of God's will, but never out of God's reach. She's a friend. The first step to wisdom is silence. The second is listening. Anne takes the worst of us and finds an advantage, and moreover, I envy her ability to listen with interest and compassion from the smallest child up to my 85-year-old mother. You've got to realize this, I wrote this 16 years ago. <laughs> Wife, by <clears throat> last but by no means least, Anne has provided everything that any husband could wish. Be assured that in 36 years of marriage, I can't say that we've never had an argument. <laughs> but she has the ability to ensure that our marriage has remained a duet instead of a duel. As a businessman who is always seeking success and the right deal, and also keeps me aware that success in marriage is more than finding the right person. It's becoming the right person. And she would tell you that's still a work in progress. <laughs> but thank y'all so much. The sky has fallen and pigs are flying. <laughs> Y'all better get your video cameras out.